Uh, so this video is to show you how to get uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon, uh, specifically Trisha 19.3. It's the latest. Uh, uh, you'll see I'm on the page right now. Um, I, I'll i do another video about why I think Cinnamon is the best distro for everyone, but it's particularly the best for beginners uh, because it is simple and just works. Uh, I had someone try to print with Arch yesterday and failed. And um, so when that kind of thing, uh, you know, I add it to my list. Look, I'm not against Arch, but... If your if your distro is is taking away from your ability to do things like code and make great software, then if that's your end goal is playing around and tinkering with your Linux, great. Uh, but for a lot of us, we just want something that works, which is why you know Mac is so successful, um, particularly with high end techs. So anyway, I won't rant more on that. Just to say, Linux Mint Cinnamon is my preferred distro. Um, and will be for the foreseeable future, but particularly for beginners. So this is how you make a, a USB stick. So here is a USB, uh, and I can I can I do that to the video? How about that? See, uh, you can't see the light in it, but this one has a light in it. I don't know the brand, but let, suffice it to say that you need to get yourself one of these. Uh, this is an 8 gig one. They're relatively cheap online. If you're like me, I you might buy like a candy jar full of them. I've got a whole candy jar full of these things because I give them up so much. Um, what they do is they allow you to put what they call an image on the USB stick. So it's essentially the same thing as the old days when people use CDs and um, they would you know, pop in a CD and boot from the CD. And that means making your computer run off of the CD uh, instead of its internal hard drive. So that means it's running off off these these fun little this fun little gadget when you boot it up. I tell you that because I've actually had somebody unplug the thing while it was running from it before. And you can imagine what that looks like. Imagine ripping the hard drive out of your computer while it was running. It did not like it. It was kind of fun to watch. Um, but <laughs> in a morbid way. So that's that's what these things are about. We're going to, um, this, uh, so again, get a USB stick. We are not going to put a file on here. We're going to turn this USB stick into a hard drive. Let me say that again. We are not putting a file on the USB stick. We are making it into effectively a hard drive. And that means that it can boot. The boot means that when you plug it in and you start up your computer under the right circumstances, after changing the BIOS, which I have to do in another video, that you can run off of it. And that's essential because you cannot install uh, something new onto the hard drive while it's running. Goes without saying, right? Another cool side effect of this is that you can actually live boot from one of these things and you can recover all the data off a non-encrypted disk. I used to do this all the time for my um, family. Uh, you know, so, and by the way, it's, it's one of the reasons that uh, booting from these things has become so difficult with something called UEFI because... It, if I can come into any computer in, in at work or at school, I can put my USB stick in, change a few things, boot up and copy all the hard drive off or whatever I want onto my little USB stick and walk away. Nobody will even know I was there. So that's that's part of the, the, the difficulty that we now have when we're trying to, to install a Linux operating system because uh, they've tried to categorize Linux as unsecure and I won't get into the whole UEFI thing. I will definitely do a, a rant on that at some point. Uh, but all back to, back to the point at case and point at hand. I, I, I do believe talking about these things is important, even if you're just starting out, because you're going to run into these uh, explanations when you when you go out there to try to make your own USB stick. And so, if you hear things like UEFI and boot and hard disk and an image, uh, you'll know what they're talking about. And then you can not just look at my video, but you could also learn from theirs. All right, back to the task at hand. So we are going to turn this into a hard drive. So the first step is we need to go get the distro's ISO. Now the ISO is short for uh, International Standards Organization. It's the it's the the thing that uh, used to be a CD. And we'll go ahead and down one. I've already downloaded one here. Uh, it says here size one. Uh, well, actually, I can probably just download another one. They're pretty small. So uh, I don't know if you can see that pop up. Um, uh, I am downloading it with Linux, uh, so in what, whatever way you download it, it depends is for you. Uh, really all you're trying to do is save the file. Don't open it in any application at this point, just click on save file and that file will then save into your downloads directory or someplace. 
and you're going to go back and you're going to find that file uh, a little bit later. Okay. So there is another file that we need to download and I'm going to do it right here with you. Um, so we're looking for a product called Belena Etcher. And the other day, uh, some friends on the stream and I uh, really went to town studying the company Belena, which is quite remarkable. And I think um, they deserve every bit of, um, of credit uh, and praise for the products that they're making. Uh, and they've got some other really fancy, amazing products. I have nothing to do with this company. I just think they're cool. Uh, one of the reasons I like them so much is because they've solved one of the biggest problems, the biggest hurdles, particularly for beginners, is that they have created a product that runs on all major operating systems in exactly the same way with the same user interface. And what that product does is it flashes a USB stick. That means that it takes an image, a thing we just downloaded, which is a hard drive basically in a file, and it converts that hard drive in a file into onto a USB stick. Now, if I, if I, it's important to note here that if I were to take that downloaded file, plug in my USB stick, and drag the file onto the USB stick, what would happen? I mean, you can probably guess, it would just copy the file to the stick, and it, you could, you know, take it around, and that people do that, you know, and they copy images and transfer them between computers. But if I want to use it to actually reinstall my operating system, I have to make a bootable, which means I have to flash it. So that's the word of the day, flash. So I'm going to go ahead, I, I've already downloaded, um, uh, uh, my image, and so now I'm going to download Belena for Linux x86, uh, and I'm going to save this file as well. You should be able to just uh, click on it, click on it, and run it. Uh, once it gets downloaded, I'm going to go see if I can find mine real quick. See, and Belena Etcher is a zip file, so you'll have to decompress the zip file. Um, you should probably know how to do that. Um, uh, if you, you've probably ex 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 extracted files before, if you have a problem with that, let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, when it's extracted, you will have a, a file that you can double click on and then either install it or run it. Um, in my case, uh, Balena Etcher is a app image, so you can't see this, but um, it's an app image which can be run. So I'm going to go ahead and run that now, and then I'll, I'll pull it up in a scene. We've got our, um, we have the download here, and we have, um, and we have, we have the, what got expanded right here is called an app image. Uh, these things can be clicked on if you have a graphic interface. If it's a command line, you can um, just run them. Um, and this is what's really great. So this, this, uh, this image we're looking at here uh, takes an image, this image that we downloaded right here. So Linux Mint 19.3, so 64-bit ISO. They usually always end in ISO, sometimes they end in IMG. Uh, we wanted the 64-bit because that's what you want. I don't. If you have a 32-bit computer, you know it's very unusual. Um, but so that's the one you want for most machines. And then uh, we're going to say select an image on the Bell and Etcher. This is the same user interface, whether it's a Mac or a Windows machine. All right, so there it was. It was like hiding way down there, saying trying to find the file. So that's going to be a lot easier for you. So you're going to go pull it up, and you're going to go click on the ISO. And then you're going to open that and it'll say select the target. So I'm going to then stick my USB stick in here. And again, I got the one with the light on it so I can see when the light does its thing. And now the lights are flashing. I'm watching the flash. It asks me what to do. I say skip this. I don't want to do anything. Cancel. Uh, it had Manjaro on it before. So because I did this. And then so we're going to go ahead and say, hey, yeah, it already detected the USB stick. The thing that's really cool about this is it detected it when I plugged it in. I didn't have to go do anything else. I think that's really great. And you can see 1%, 2% flashing. So um, while this is working and it'll finish very quickly, um, let's talk about the next step. So uh, what this is doing is it's flashing. It means it's writing 0 for 0, 1 for 1, uh, every bit from that image directly onto the USB stick, which includes the tiny little bit at the beginning of the USB stick or the, any hard drive, uh, which tells it what to do with the rest of the hard drive. You know, it's um, what makes it bootable, what makes it able to be run and have the computer think, okay, hey, this is the main hard drive. So that's what bootable means, and that's what that's what we're creating. Um, uh, and then 
the second thing it's going to do after it gets done flashing uh, is it's going to verify the checksum. That means it's making sure that all the bits that got written to it are fine, that they haven't gotten hurt, <laughs> that nothing's fallen apart. And this, by the way, if you've done, if you're a more advanced user, and if you've ever done any of this using the DD tool, which is remarkable, I love the DD tool for other things. Um, uh, then you know that sometimes that can go wrong and it's a little bit harder to validate with DD. Uh, for example, DD uh, just has you um, as set a particular speed and size and if for some reason the device, the hardware itself can't keep up with what you've set, there's no there's no notification of it. You just get a basically broken USB stick and unless you validate it, which it takes time, you you just don't know. Right, you just don't know if things going to work, if it's going to be bootable, and you're you're more prone to wonder if it's something you did wrong or the device did wrong. And so, it, when you're dealing with these kinds of things, when you're dealing with like booting from a USB stick and blowing away a computer and putting a new operating system on it, these are the kind of things that you know I'm okay. I'm okay with something that's consistent and it's been tested and it's like less error prone to user error. So this is where I'm okay with um, adopting something like Belena Etcher for this and I'm really glad that they made this tool for us. Um, of course they put their advertising in here and we'll let it run because I think they deserve that that recognition. So uh, as soon as the disk is the USB is finished flashing and verifying the next task is going to be to restart the computer but to not normally restart it we're going to leave our USB stick in there we're going to restart the computer and then we're going to do something called boot boss boot we're going to try to find the BIOS setting and change it so that it boots from the USB stick and there's many different ways to do this um, every it's different on every computer so this is really hard to show but what you need to do is figure out how to boot into your how to change your boot order that's the keyword boot order boot order and or and or how to load the system settings or the bios b-i-o-s if you can pull those things up then you will be able to do the next step which is to change it so that it boots not from the hard drive inside the computer but from the hard the usb hard drive that you just made it's not a hard drive it's a usb thumb drive but it's effectively a hard drive and when you change that order and you put the the USB device in front of the rest of the stuff, it will then um, it will then boot and be free to do whatever comes next. So the next step after that is, of course, install uh, the operating system, and uh, that's a matter for another day. Uh, but but the, the really great thing about Mint is that, and here we are validating, great, um, is that Mint is able to do things with its installer I have never seen in like 20 years or so of watching Linux. Um, it is amazing. I mean, it, it, you can, in fact, I even went back on my advice to avoid dual booting because of the problem that, for, particularly for beginners, I still am sort of anti dual boot because just get another Windows machine, you're fine. But um, it's it's remarkably easier to do uh, with the Mint installer. Uh, I've I've done the Manjaro installer, I've done Arch installer, I've done all of them, and I got to tell you, the Mint installer is so elegant. I mean, it is just elegant at every level. The team has done a fantastic job, and. Therefore, I don't think you need to be afraid of the of the installer. I actually, I, without exaggeration, I had an 11 year old reinstall his operating system on his own using a USB stick that he had flashed with me while we were here doing this very process because he didn't like it the way it had been set up and he wanted to try it over again. And so he just decided to reinstall his whole OS. That's how easy the process of installing operating systems has gotten for Linux, uh, particularly for Mint. So uh, I hope hopefully that will you know, embolden you to give it a try if you've never, if you've never tried Linux. Um, it, it really is a matter of creating this USB stick like we're doing and getting your computer to boot off of it and then clicking on a few buttons that are really easy and, and go ahead and, and do that. So we got a notification that the flash has been completed, but we even got a, a pretty little notification on the op operating system. Should I flash another? No, we're not going to flash another today. So that concludes this video about how to to generate um, the USB stick. If you actually want to look at the the USB, 
uh, it still keeps it here, sort of. Uh, in fact, let me see where my where's my desktop. And all right, so then we have here we have a device, and you can see that it says Linux on it. It says mount the Linux media, and it's got all the stuff in it. Okay, now this don't be deceived. This is not you know a hard drive full of things. It kind of is, but it's it's also now bootable. So uh, don't add anything to it or anything. We're going to go ahead and inject it and be ready to do the next step. I'm waiting for the lights to stop blinking. These lights on this particular USB, sometimes they blink even after it's been disconnected for some reason. I don't understand fully why. But I, I just want to make a plug again for the LEDs. When you're doing your installation and you're wondering if it's even booting off your USB stick, it's often nice to have the lights on there just to see that the computer's talking to the device instead of just not even seeing it. So those are some tips to, to have it to have a go. Um, if you have questions, let me know. I make another video to clarify. But it's actually um, pretty straightforward. And after that, I actually take a, I don't have one, but I usually take a label maker and I'll just put like, like mint on there. And then I'll store that aside. And then I will, every time they come out with a new major version, uh, I'll put it on here. Uh, one note, by the way, once you get done running your installer, I, I'm, I'll say this another time too, but you, you need to make sure to run your, your, your update immediately. So you'll go ahead and finish your installation, reboot your computer without the USB stick. And then from there, you're going to want to immediately upgrade because there's probably been a lot of stuff come out since the main uh, USB image came out and you'll want to make sure to get that right away. If you wait too long, it might be harder to get it. So uh, I will um, talk about that in another video perhaps. All right. Thanks.